The next topic is called infinite sequences. This section gives definitions and results which are useful for the next topic which is called infinite series and which we already have an understanding of. Taylor polynomials are series with finite terms that can be expanded to be series with infinite terms and the same can be said for Riemann sums. As we've seen the definition of the definite integral is the Riemann sum with an infinite number of terms. And this is the definition of the definite integral. And on the right-hand side of the equation is the Riemann sum, which is an infinite series, because there are an infinite number of terms in the sum. Now let me introduce infinite sequences with an example. A company keeps a record of the number of sales it makes every month and produces the following table. And if the company continues to sell its products indefinitely, then the number of sales forms an infinite sequence of numbers. Let's now look at the definition of an infinite sequence. An infinite sequence is a function whose domain is the set of positive integers. The functional values a1, a2, a3, an are the terms of the sequence and the term an is called the nth term of the sequence. Hence, an infinite sequence can be seen as a function where the input values are positive integers, in this case 1, 2, 3, n, and this goes on all the way to infinity, and the output values are the terms of the sequence, a1, a2, a3, an, and there are terms all the way to infinity. And now making the link with our previous example, month gives the input value to the function, and the output the output value is the number of sales, which is also the terms of the infinite sequence. Let's now look at an example. I'll list the terms of the following sequence. And here's the solution. And I've replaced n with the positive integers, 1, 2, 3, n, and this goes on all the way to infinity. And now if we multiply each term by the respective integer we get. And I'm now going to let you work on an example and here's the example. List the terms of the following sequence. We're now going to continue with another example. Find an expression for the nth term of the following sequence. And here's the solution. The terms of the sequence can be written in the following form. Here's the first term and the second term, the third term, and now the fourth term. And from this we see that the nth term is equal to the following, which is equal to, and we're now going to continue with another example, which is to sketch the graph of the sequence 1 over 2n, which is the same sequence that we found in the previous example. Since the domain is the set of positive integers, the graph will be a collection of points in the xy plane. And we begin by making a table of these points. And here's the table. The next step is to sketch these points. And here's the graph now. And each point that we see is a point in the previous table. What we see from this graph is that as n increases, the values of the sequence decrease and it can be shown that as n approaches infinity the uh, terms of the sequence are actually approaching zero so in this case we say that the infinite sequence is converging to the number zero and this brings us to the following definition limit of a sequence so we consider this infinite sequence here and we'll say that the sequence converges and has the limit l written limit as n approaches infinity a n is equal to l if the terms of the sequence a n can be made as close to l as we please by taking n sufficiently large if a sequence is not convergent it is said to be divergent and as we're going to see finding the limit of a sequence is the same as finding the infinite limit of a continuous function which we are al already familiar with let's now look at an example determine whether the infinite sequence 1 over 2n converges or diverges and here's the solution so what we have is a limit at infinity 
So the limit as n approaches infinity of 1 over 2n, which we know is equal to 0. Hence, we say that the sequence converges to 0. We're going to continue with another example. Determine whether the infinite sequence cube root of n converges or diverges, and here's the solution. So we write the a n term, which is the cube root of n, which is equal to n to the power 1 over 3. And now we find the limit as n approaches infinity of a n, which is. And to find this limit, we need to know how the function n to the power 1 over, 1 over 3 behaves. So let's look at that. Uh, let's look at the graph of this function, which is. So we see as n approaches infinity, the graph goes to infinity. Hence, the limit is equal to infinity. And in this case, we say that the infinite sequence diverges. And I'm going to end this presentation with an example for you to work on, and here it is. So once again, to determine whether the infinite sequence converges or diverges, in this case we have the following rational function, 3n squared plus n minus 1 over 6n squared plus n plus 1.